What's going on guys, Stevie here with Lucky Crit, and today I want to talk about Fire Emblem Echoes, Shadows of Valentia. And more specifically, should you buy Fire Emblem Echoes, Shadows of Valentia? Recently we had our very first Nintendo Fire Emblem Direct. It was a Nintendo news broadcast focused solely on the Fire Emblem series. Within this presentation, Fire Emblem Echoes, Shadows of Valentia was revealed. Fire Emblem Echoes will be the next upcoming Fire Emblem title on the Nintendo 3DS, launching really soon actually, on May 19th, 2017. As Nintendo gracefully called it, a reimagining of the second ever Fire Emblem game, Fire Emblem Gaiden. Now, this is a potentially risky move for Nintendo. The last time we got a Fire Emblem remake here in the West was Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon in early 2009. Unfortunately, because it was a remake of the original Fire Emblem game, its dated feeling style, the fact that it was missing some of the series' most prominent mechanics, and an overall lack of new features, the fan reception wasn't amazing. Don't be misled though, it's still a great game and I love it immensely, even if I am one of the few. You see, a lot of the great and nuanced features that had been developed and had found their place in the Fire Emblem series over the years were missing from Shadow Dragon. This of course being due to the fact that it was a remake of the original that didn't have them and Nintendo wanted to keep it true to its roots. There was no shoving and rescuing units to further add tactical depth, no support conversations, resulting in very dull characters with little backstory, as well as a rather odd system in place to unlock the extra Gaiden chapters, their requirement being that you had to have less than 15 living units. Personally though, I thought that was kind of cool. The bond that you were supposed to have built with these units that made you want to keep them alive was not really present. Remove that, and all you've got are discardable troops that function more effectively as bait on a fishing line. And, if you wanted to access those extra Gaiden chapters for some of the cooler characters, you were going to have to purposefully kill a lot of characters. I mean it, a lot of characters would have to die for your sick desires. I know this, because I ruthlessly did it. It resulted in, ironically, my favorite Fire Emblem save file of all time though, but that's a story for another day. Some fans were also not enamored with the new art style, citing that the animations were much less visually appealing. Gone were the flashy animations of old, and the newer ones were much more standard and boring in their nature and execution. Most of the palette colors for your units were also the same. Red and green paladins? Both orange. This one I've got to agree with. If a unit has pink armor in his portrait, his sprite had better have pink armor too. That's just lazy. The story, being that it was a story developed for the original NES game and they didn't take any risks reimagining it, was also pretty boring by today's standards. Evil dragon guy tries to take over the world, young angsty prince sets out on a journey to defeat him. Though classic, it's not great. Why am I telling you this though? Because if you're excited about Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valentia, we need to understand that this game will be a remake too. There's no confirmation yet as to whether or not marriage will play into the game like it did in Awakening and Fates, no confirmed return of the My Unit Avatar character, and some of your favorite new features like Dual Guard and Dual Strike, Tag Team and Pair Up, may also be absent. This is a remake or a reimagining of a very old game that is essentially the black sheep of the entire franchise. So let's discuss what's so different about it and see what the trailer that we got from the Nintendo Direct can show us. Gaiden tells the story of two heroes, Alm and Celica, on the continent of Valentia. This continent is present in the same world as Marth's Arcania, simply across the sea to the west. The story revolves around these young heroes battling the Regalian Empire in order to destroy the god Duma. Fire Emblem Gaiden was the first game in the series to feature a traversable world map, and it also had the player squaring off against not only enemy armies, but also hordes of the undead. This was new to the series. In the time since this game, we've experienced these two big features again in Fire Emblem Sacred Stones and Fire Emblem Awakening, but Gaiden was the first game to feature this trend. For the first time in the Fire Emblem series, Gaiden featured dungeon and town exploration. In Echoes, this will be done in a really cool and interesting third-person perspective, kind of like in the Tales series. Also like the Tales games, it seems that when the enemy is struck to initiate a battle, they enter combat with a little bit of missing HP. Class changing was also very different in Gaiden, occurring only in special shrines scattered across the continent, not via seals in your home base. In the example shown, we see that the villager class can promote into one of the five base classes, Cavalier, Soldier, Mercenary, Archer, and Mage. Gaiden was also the first game in the series to feature branch promotions, the likes of which Sacred Stones and Awakening, as well as Fates, brought back. We see that promoting a villager to a Cavalier only boosts defense and movement. Later we're shown this same character, now a Paladin, and interestingly enough, the skill set is also displayed here as tech. Here's a comparison between an early chapter of Gaiden and Echoes. Notice anything different? There's actually one more unit in Echoes over here to the right. 
Though fans speculated that perhaps we would see the return of the My Unit or Avatar character that had been present in New Mystery, Awakening, and Fates, and maybe they'd start off as a villager character, we have no real confirmation of this. In Gaiden, Alm started off with three villagers, not four. We are shown that this new unit is named Effie. No, not Effie from Fates, who was actually Elfie in Japan. Whether or not this is simply a new character added to the somewhat small roster from Gaiden, or will be the My Unit playable character, remains to be seen. I wouldn't get my hopes up though. With Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon, we did receive some newly created units added into the roster to flesh it out better, and that could be the case for this character. The other characters we see on the list are characters obtained early on in Gaiden, Ruka, Grey, Robin, Cliff, Silk, and Claire, as well as two more that we can't see in the trailer. When Alm goes to attack, we can see a new menu option pop up, food. This is all pure speculation at this point, but perhaps it will be similar to the food cooking feature in Fire Emblem Fates, where units could cook meals for temporary stat boosts to your soldiers. When Alm goes to attack, we learn that we can now see each unit's defense in the battle forecast. In this game, you will actually have to physically calculate the damage, just like in the original Gaiden. However, the HP bars do seem to show how much damage is afflicted anyway. And look at that! In the top left corner, there's a cut-in of what appears to be a support partner. Perhaps we'll be seeing a return of the support boost like HP and critical hit rate that we've come to know and love in the later Fire Emblem titles. This bodes well for the potential return of support conversations to flesh out the characters and give each other boosts on the battlefield. Pair up and tag team from Awakening and Fates will likely be taking a backseat in this installment but we're still not completely sure just yet. We're then shown some other characters which turn out to be Robin and Saber, two returning characters that were present in Gaiden. Nope, not this Robin, who is known as Refure or Reflet in Japan. This Robin has been fan translated as Tobin. Thankfully, we'll also be seeing the return of CG cutscenes similar to those in Awakening, as well as cutscenes featuring the in-game character models. Cool. Displayed next to the year on the world map is the season Pegasus. This could imply that throughout the game there will be certain seasons present that will affect gameplay or even perhaps a time limit to beat the game. There are also some interesting clues in these quick battle scenes that were shown. After this bow user attacks and misses, the player character immediately retaliates. This doesn't usually happen as archers can only attack from one tile away, but in Gaiden archers could attack at melee range too, so it's safe to assume that this aspect will be returning in Fire Emblem Echoes. We then see Celica taking down a Draco zombie, and when she casts her spell she doesn't take any damage. Magic worked much differently in Gaiden, where it would actually cost your mage HP in order to attack. It seems that this classic part of Gaiden will not be present in the remake. The trailer also shows us a Trojan horse-like war contraption on the Regellian side, which would be very interesting to see as an enemy unit, so who knows what else could be in store. And it also reveals that both Duma and Mila are dragons. Not a big shocker, but a lot of fans wondered just what the hell Duma was over the years. Just look at that sprite. Just look at it. The official website also shows us that the game will be amiibo compatible, and there will be a double pack of amiibo figures released, featuring Alm and Celica. Hopefully we'll be able to use our other amiibos, like Ike, Marth, Robin, and Lucina, similarly to how they worked in Fates, summoning them into your castle for free items, battling them, and then recruiting them. Thanks to Serenus Forest, we also have the official artwork of some of these reimagined characters. The blonde-haired male with blue armor could potentially be Clive, a Cavalier of the Resistance. This mage character looks to be Bowie from Celica's party, then we have Saber, who we saw confirmed with his name earlier in the trailer, and a mysterious final character with dark hair. No playable character in Gaiden had that hair color, so it's unclear who this could be. So, it's fair to say that Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valentia will be fairly different than the Fire Emblem games we've come to love over the past few years. While I have absolutely no doubt that it will be a great game no matter what direction they take it, if your first foray into Fire Emblem was Awakening, know that you're in for a bit of a switch up. Get it? Switch up. Nintendo Switch, this joke sucks, remove it from the house. So, should you buy it? Well, if you loved Awakening and Fates for more than just the marriage system, my unit, and avatar, if you actually loved the gameplay, the characters, maybe even the story, this will definitely be a good game to add to your collection. However, if your love for Fire Emblem was based solely upon the marriage and dating aspects of Fire Emblem, you might be disappointed. But we don't know for sure just yet. So make sure to stay up to date on all the information released for Fire Emblem Echoes, and then make your decision once we know a bit more. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and making it this far in the video. If you've come all this way, be sure to comment Echoes, or leave me a comment in the comment section. And if you learned anything from this video about what to expect in Fire Emblem Echoes, please don't hesitate to slash that thumbs up down below and get subscribed. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.